Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome to my metal shop. Today, we're going to do a tool talk about test indicators. We've got a stair last word indicator, a Michitoyo, and then the Rolls Royce, the Inner Rapid. What is a test indicator and why is it different than a dial indicator? Well, let's look at a dial indicator. The real difference is how this probe moves in and out in a linear fashion. And on a test indicator, it actually pivots on a point and only moves about 20 thousandths of an inch. Also, the way they read is different. This one really can only read an outside measurement like this. It's not good for an interior reading. Another difference is the way the dial is set up. And the dial on these, you'll notice, counts all the way around. And the needle will clock 360 degrees. And there's also a second hand that counts down every revolution of that hand, as you can see. When that goes around, every time it's counted on that second hand. One thing they do have in common, or two things is, they'll all have a reading on it telling you what accuracy this is. So this one here is .001, so every mark of this is accurate to a thousandth of an inch. Another thing they have in common is the bezel will rotate to help set up the zero lining up where you need it to be with the needle. A test indicator, what it excels at is reading inside measurement or getting into unique positions where a dial indicator can't get to. Here is the first one we're going to look at. This is really, I would say, the grandfather of test indicators is the Sterrett last word indicator. And it has similar things to the uh, dial indicator in that you know, the bezel rotates, it has a needle inside, those typical things. But where it's different is how this probe is actually used. Only moves a little bit and it pivots right here. And that's its difference. So it can only move a travel of about 20 thousandths of an inch. That dial indicator can move about one inch. Some of them will move up to three or four inches. So they can do a lot with that linear travel, but they can't get inside a hole as easily as we can with one of these. This one here, what makes it different than these other two, is the probe only moves in one direction until you hit the lever on the side, and now it moves in the opposite direction. Another thing that separates this from a dial indicator is if you read the numbers on the face, you'll see that it counts you know, 0, 5, 10, 15, and then on the other side, it counts 5, 10, 15. So the numbering system doesn't go all the way around, and that's what makes these different. This one here has a pin on the top that you can mount into a holder, and it'll articulate around. Also, there's an area here where you could put a pin in and mount it in a holder also. Let's look at the Michitoyo. Now, this is a very modern version of this. Some of the things that are different the way this probe, it actually reads in both directions, which is excellent. So you don't have to flip the switch on the back. Another thing is, it has these dovetails. And these dovetails are designed to mount exterior post on. So then you can mount it on some sort holder or something else along that same line. Now these dovetails, there's one on the front, the back, and also the top. That's going to allow you to put this post in different places so you can get this gauge in to areas that a dial indicator can't reach. Something else similar, the bezel rotates so you can zero it out. This one here, um, accuracy is .0005, so that's half a thousandth. Great, great gauge. Here is the Rolls-Royce. This is the Inner Rapid. Now this one here, the number on it is 312B-3. And what that 3 means, this thing rocks. 
it is accurate to ten thousandths of an inch. Every time that needle goes to a mark, that means this probe moved ten thousandths of an inch. It's amazing. These are Swiss made, which also makes sense. Switzerland is the land of the clocks, and really, that's what this thing is. It just moves so smooth. Really, the Rolls Royce when you compare it to these other two. Now, let's talk about proper setup of a test indicator. Remember, this probe pivots, and on a dial indicator, the probe moves in a linear fashion. This has very little room to move and stay accurate because it pivots. Setting this up, you have to be very careful that this probe is always tangent or parallel to the surface that you're reading to get an accurate reading. If you were to measure this out, this probe, it's about three quarters of an inch long, and you can see that's the way it should be reading. Now let's say if we moved it down here and try to get a reading, well now the probe is only out from the center pivot about three eighths of an inch, so it's about half the distance, and you won't get the same reading. So let me show you. I want to now set up an experiment that shows you how critical it is to have this probe in the right position. Remember, it has to be as parallel to the surface or as tangent to the surface as possible. That's not the same as the gauge. The gauge can run at any position it needs to as long as that probe is parallel to the surface. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to set up some gauge blocks here. Actually, these are space blocks. Let's pull out two one-inch ones, and what's going to happen is the one on the right is going to be the standard that our part needs to measure. The other one is our part, let's pretend that it just came off the lathe, and we're trying to find out if it's going to be within the tolerance already set for us. So we're going to pull out a hundred thousandths and a hundred and five thousandths. So we know our part is going to be five thousandths off. What we're trying to show is how critical it is to get your test indicator set up correctly. I'm going to ring these together. And I always like this. This is so cool. These surfaces are so flat and so smooth that when you press them together, it takes all the air out, and they stick together like magnets. Here is our standard, or our hero part. And here is what just came off the lathe. So let me bring in our test indicator here. Now this test indicator is set up so the probe is as tangent to the surface as we can get it. And we're going to bring this under here, and it should read, let's see, let's adjust it just a little bit. So there we go. This one is going to read five thousandths difference. Right there. Just a little bit. Let's bring in another test indicator. They're built, both Michitoyos are very similar. And, oh, I almost forgot. The other critical thing to setting up these gauges is they need to also be square. If they're off, you're going to get a false reading. This is our hero or our standard. Let's bring this under here and see how that reads. Okay, it's reading right on zero. This probe here is reading more at this angle, giving us a little different rotation on that pivot point. And the question is, will this read uh, 3,000 thunder? 3,000 silver? I'm not exactly sure. Let's find out. Slide it under here. There it is. So this should have been reading at the 5. It's reading at what? Uh, 1, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8,000. So it's reading um, 3,000 more than it should. 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes. <laughs> 3,000 more than it should. So let's bring back in our hero our standard, so it reads at zero. This one here, like I said, should read at five, and it's reading at eight. Quite a difference. That's how critical it is to set these gauges up correctly. I hope you've liked this demonstration. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.